right, it's about seven o'clock. Start of our morning, day three in, what's this place called again? Punta Ardita, here on the Pacific coast of Colombia. This is where we're staying. This is our fourth day of fishing, I believe. That's three, four. Fourth day of fishing, I believe. And this is our last day of popping for Kubera snapper and rooster fish. Tommy caught two nice Kuberas yesterday. We had lots of opportunities on rooster fish, but we're not gonna talk about that. We have another brand new, fresh, beautiful day of fishing out here in the Pacific Ocean. So this is our last full day to really grind and really give it our all because our bodies are pretty beat up at this point from three days of fishing, two days of that hardcore popping. We're about to get on our little cargo boat here that takes us out to our bigger popping boat and hopefully we'll get started pretty quick here. That was easy. That was nothing compared to yesterday. Onward! Here's our second spot of the morning. About as beautiful as you could possibly imagine, a fishing spot. I think that's like the millionth time I've said that, but all these places still blow me away equally every time. Especially when it's sunny like this. We're staying positive, but two days ago when it was sunny and kind of calm like this, the fishing was Fishing sucks. We are fit throwing topwater baits, so. I know these things aren't exactly largemouth bass, but the largemouth bass topwater fishing sure is better when it's cloudy. Sergio, I need to put on a small lure so I can catch a fish. <laughs> We've been grinding so hard in this hot equatorial sun. Okay. It's really humid out here. It's by far the hottest day it's been yet. I was, this is the type of heat that I was kind of worried about was going to be because it's been nice and cool this whole time, but it's almost noon already, so we've been fishing for close to five hours. Like all this school of little jacks just keeps looking at it. They don't do anything. I was kind of worried when I walked out this morning and saw a sun because two days ago, we just, we piss grinded all day popping like this in the sun and caught one rock snapper on a glide bait, Scott did. So far today, that's kind of been the same story today. I, I don't think these fish like the sun at all, especially in the rainy season. I mean, it's the amount of light penetration from yesterday when it was really dark, heavy clouds, the pouring rain to today is, I mean, it's so different. And yesterday we saw the Kubera snapper, we saw like five rooster fish. Haven't seen a single thing today. So it's, it's, it's hard to not point the finger at the sun and really hope for clouds, but you can't do anything about it anyway. We really, we're kind of frustrated because this is ideal weather to chase tuna and sailfish. That's the other really cool thing this time of year. What we did the very first night we were here, which was just follow bait balls, look for birds, and just see schools of big elephant and tuna and huge sailfish just crushing the sardines. Unfortunately, that does, that's not really happening right here along the coast. If we wanna see that sort of action, we have to drive like two hours south, I think they said. So when we drove up here, we really committed to kuberas and rooster fish and the weather just seems like it sucks for it. That doesn't mean we can't catch one just because the conditions aren't ideal. So I, I'm pretty sure we're just committed to grinding all day. Any cast could be it. I feel like I'm musky fishing, like big time. Fish. Fish? You get a jack? Probably. How heavy? Not heavy. Yeah. <laughs> that was the calmest I've ever heard someone say they lost a fish. Just because you're in disbelief. Oh, oh gone. Just don't even care. Just, just gone. I don't think it was, I think it was a jack. Like that fish never took drag. I think, uh, guys, Scott and I are having a really rough decision on whether to tell our guide or not that we want to abandon this and go, uh, oh look, you got more jacks behind you. Yep. Abandon this and go fish for uh, sailfish, but honestly, I think that's what I want to do. I have absolutely zero confidence in doing this type of fishing. I'm not like, I'm tired, but I'll, I'll freaking rip all day long like I have the last couple days with my body being tired. But if my mind is not in it and I have no confidence in what we're doing, then that becomes a problem. You hooked a fish. Finally. Dude, what I is it? on one end Big of it. There's like a whole school of maybe 200. That was a lot, dude. Godcast's in there. 
Chris, earlier in the trip, I wouldn't ask you to grab a shot of this fish, but I think I am going to at this point. That's fair. Jack. That is a giant jack. The reflection was messing with me. Oh, that's why. Oh, that's why. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Dude, that's still a tanker, though. <laughs> There's you. It is not your day. Dude, I was able to, you know, I hit the school so intensely that I was guaranteed to snag one. Wow, you didn't even catch it. It snagged in the back. That's fitting. It's super fitting, dude. I, I honestly, I wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> Why does he have blood on the top of him, Scott? <laughs> this is my first fish in three days. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, not much to say. I think I snagged him in the dorsal fin. There's a school of 300s, so, you know, I was bound to hit one of them. That's, those are the odds you needed at this point. I needed something like that. It's been it's been a pretty rough trip for me fishing wise, but it is good to put one of these guys in the boat. This is my biggest shack ever. Adios. Dying in the lack of fish activity. That's literally the first bite we've had in eight hours of popping. Rooster, 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 rooster. Ah, uh, not a funny joke. On. On? On. Get him out, get him out, get him out. It's not big. It's not? not. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I'm gonna call, I'm gonna go small. <laughs> is it a Cupera? No, it's not a Cupera. Just boat flip it, honestly. What is that, dude? A little snapper. Dude, that might be a baby Cupera. I think it actually is. Is it a Cupera? Freaking baby Cooper, are you kidding? That's actually a really pretty fish. Wow. That is like a that's like a half year old Kubera snapper. Wow. That is the trophy we're trying for. Grab a camera real quick. <laughs> wow. Sergio. Sergio. Smallest Kubera you've seen? Picked up a Kubera. Not Where's necessarily. the excitement level right now? <laughs> it's, it's a confused one. It's not necessarily the size I was after, but it is the target species. These get to 80, 90 pounds, by the way, right? Yeah, it is good to get one in the boat. It's number three for the trip. Definitely the smallest one by, by a solid margin. Oh, <laughs> he was ready. <laughs> he was ready. Cool. Well, you caught one. Got one. way any of us have ever gotten to and from our fishing boat for the day. The Erdita rock is literally right there. We have to look at it all day once we're here at the lodge. So these are the happiest dogs. Thumbnail. Welcome to day five here in Columbia. It's getting harder and harder to wake up every morning. This is our last day of fishing. It's raining a decent amount. There's a lot of thunderstorms out there right now. It seems that today we have great conditions for the Kubera's and the rooster fish, but not good for the tuna and sailfish. So we do have to drive down south, so that is a given, but I'm not sure if we're gonna stop on the way and then fish for Kubera's and rooster fish because when it's rainy, windy, big waves, it's not exactly the best conditions to be looking for these schools of tuna and sailfish because all that fishing is done by eyesight. You have to look, so. I don't know. All I'm seeing right now when I look is a lot of lightning out there. So it's like 6.30 right now. I'm assuming we're going to be leaving pretty quickly here. But yeah, this is our last day in Punta Ardita. you guys right now for my GoPro because I've got a long range lens on the big camera dedicated to trying to get tuna and sailfish blow ups and fights but oh, turn around turn around turn around Tommy and, and it's gone what happened Tommy well Tommy just missed a tuna or a skipjack or something like that but like I said we just switched spots where Bai is over there there's like a big rock out here or something, but there's commercial fishermen everywhere and they're just absolutely slaying the elephant tuna. We're kind of trolling around them because we don't want to uh, 
disturb them at all. Scott's cracking into his lunch. Can you please show everyone exactly what we're eating every day? Well, the everyday routine is tuna. Today, the tuna is in the form of a tuna cake. It's amazing that they find different ways to cook the same things every day. What's amazing to me is how they manage to always have tuna. <laughs> you know, it seems to be a, a struggle. For Honestly, us. it's not really that there's amazing. There's tuna right there. There's tuna right here. We just can't seem to find the living form. <laughs> Besides the tuna, we have rice. This is a potato, I think. Yeah. It's a potato and then an egg. That's it. That's it. It's good though. It's their their food is really good. It's super simple, and every single day it's it's always good because they kind of make it in a different way. What we're doing right now is we're trolling around the commercial fishermen right there. I'm gonna continue trying to get some long range shots of tuna blowing up and stuff like that, but we only have like four hours left of our entire trip, and uh, yeah, I gave up on the roosters and the kuberas. Now we need some sails and tuna to save the day. What is it? Sailfish? Sail. 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 Oh my god, trolling worked! Uh, Save your time. Save your time. It's a sail. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Did you break him? Is someone playing a cruel joke on us? Trophy rooster missed. Sailfish. Missed. Let me see that lure, Tommy. This thing. We're in disbelief at this point. Wow. I, think, I don't see I any think, teeth marks. I think uh, the last was the saltfish too. No, no it's the Sierra. It's got thoughts? <laughs> well guys that is um that is how our final day of fishing ended we trolled for another hour nothing more we went back to the hotel ate dinner chilled like so, so, fell asleep at like seven o'clock it's now the following morning six thirty in the morning this here is the plane we're going to take back to medellin to fly back to the united states here in i think our flight's at 11 and then we land in miami around 4 4, uh, 4 p.m I've never been in a small plane like this. How long have you been flying planes like this? For 30 years almost. 30? Because I, I had a, a Cessna, a single engine, 182 or 32 years. And oh. then I, 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 I sold it and I bought this uh, uh, eight years ago. Oh, so this is your personal and plane? My, yours, and yours too. <laughs> Mine too today. Call me next time you want to, be a, to take a ride around. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well guys, unfortunately that is how our Columbia trip is gonna end. If you've watched this video up to this point and watched my videos a decent amount, you can tell that this video had a very somber, uh, kind of deflated tone to it. I guess that's the right word to it because, I mean, that was the last two videos I posted, day three was had to be split into two videos because it was so long. This video was day four and day five and it barely was one video. To say we were disappointed with how day four and day five turned out would, obviously that would be an understatement. It's nobody's fault, that's just fishing. After talking with the guides and the, the head guy that operates these trips, um, we, we kind of just got screwed. They don't really know why, but the fishing was just really bad for us. That, that whole trip, for the most part, um, groups that usually go on those trips have far, far, far better results than, than what we did. We honestly had a, shots at a decent trip, but we lost just so many damn fish. And some of those times were our fault, some of those were not, but it's, um, it sucks because, it sucks for me editing this video because I'm always an extremely positive person. That's the only way to go through life, in my opinion. There's, there's no way to change things when they're going wrong. You just gotta stay positive and stay focused. This video was really deflating because we spent so much time and so much money to get there. We had heard such incre incredible stories about the fishery, but there's no fishing area on planet Earth that you're not gonna have humble days on. There's, there's no place on planet Earth that's just gonna be phenomenal day in and day out. And that day four and five just sucked. 
just just sucked. In two days, we snagged one Jack Creval in the back. That's not to take away from this trip. Colombia, the food, the scenery, all the people we met was the most. It was the most incredible week of my life, even though with the fishing was very subpar. But the thing about that is that me, Scott, and another guy who's another YouTuber. We might be going back here in a month because we have so much unfinished business to do. Myself as a content creator, there were so many epic shots and like lists of things I wanted to accomplish with a plethora of different species. I bought so much nicer filming equipment than I typically have and basically struck out on everything. So just from a personal vendetta standpoint, there is a lot of unfinished business I have here in Colombia. I'll keep you guys updated, but I might be going back here very, very soon. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the entire series. This was definitely something that's very different from my channel. Again, like I said before, I know it's kind of hard to relate to. I know most of you prefer videos that are from the United States and you guys and are stuff that you guys do, but it's awesome to go outside the box and experience the world and travel because I think traveling is one of the coolest and most important things you can do in your life. And I feel blessed to have this experience. So thank you again to each and every one of you for watching, especially if you stay tuned to every single episode. I know a lot of you were giving raving reviews and loved everyone. I spent a lot of time into editing these videos. So, I mean, it's like two weeks after we came back. So I spent a lot of time to make sure these were really well done for, for my standards. And uh, not sure if there's gonna be a next time in Columbia very soon, but if there is, I'm going to jump at the opportunity.